Now for that one, I'm going to go ahead and do it with, um, I'm going to go ahead and use good old school Elmer's glue on this one. Um, I usually recommend using at least carpenter's wood glue. Uh, it bonds a little better, but if this is all you got, it's okay, and we're going to go ahead and use it for this one because, yeah, why not? I'll give it a try. Um, okay, so what you want to do is, I have these cute little cups that I had found, and so these work really well for glue. So what I'll do is I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little bit of our Elmer's glue in there. Just makes it a little easier. And then what I've done is I've gotten an inexpensive paintbrush. And uh, this works really well for dipping in the glue and putting it on just where you want. What I don't like about it is the bristles are kind of long, and so they don't give you a lot of control. So what I like to do is I like to get a pair of scissors, and I like to actually cut those bristles. So what I do is I cut them off maybe a third their length, maybe half to a third at a bit of an angle, and we just kind of trim up those bristles a little bit. And that gives us a little bit stiffer, shorter brush for better control. Let's get those out of the way. Okay. Don't let your hardware run away. Now, for this one we're going to use the, part, the backing that has a single hole in it. And then we need these two D-shaped pieces. Again, we look at this piece, we look at the two, the holes on both sides, we find the side that the hole is not as clean, the oblong side, and that's going to be the inside of the part. Now, this is the screw piece. It's going to drop through this hole. And it's what's going to attach these two pieces together. What we do not want to do is we do not want to glue this, th this screw to this piece of wood. This gets a little trickier because you're going to have to glue the joints without gluing the screw. And what I found, the easiest way to avoid gluing that uh, you can try it without this, but I've glued them many a times and you have to start over. Um, is actually to just take some good old fashioned, that's an old bottle of Vaseline, and just get a little bit of Vaseline and give this screw kind of a coating. Just rub it in all over. You know, you don't have to get it, wow, look at that one, right down inside the cut jar. Um, you know, you can give it a little bit of a coating and then what I'll do is I'll take a towel and I'll wipe it off so you get the big globs off of it. But in general, you've given it kind of a nice oily coating. And what that oil will do is that will keep you, that will keep the screw, the, the super glue or whatever glue you're using from sticking to the screw if it does happen to get on there. Uh, clean your hands well. You don't want to get this oil all over the wood. Um, and then we'll move on. Okay, so this part isn't quite, doesn't quite assemble as nicely as this part does. It kind of has floating parts. So what we've done is we've made this little fixture here. And this little fixture helps hold the parts in place while you glue it and assemble it. So, to use the Elmer's glue, I'm just going to take a little bit of Elmer's glue here on, a tooth, on the brush, and I'm just going to paint it inside each of these little notches here trying to avoid getting it on the screw, although I got a little bit on there, but since we put the Vaseline on, it won't make that big a deal. Again, I will tell you that my preferred method is definitely super glue, because you don't have to wait, and you can kind of pre-assemble everything before you glue it. When you use this, you have to check each part. Okay, so we're going to look at our D-shaped pieces here. We're going to look for the clean hole side, and that side's going to go out. So same thing here. I'm going to kind of coat this connecting surface of the part with a little bit of Elmer's glue. And then I'm just going to kind of slide it in place. Oh, don't let your screw fall out. Once you got this glued up, it's got to be in there. We're just going to kind of slide that part in place. Do it for the same for the other side. A little bit of glue. Now the nice thing about the Elmer's glue is if you get a little sloppy, we can wipe it down when we're done with a damp rag and take all that glue off. So, we're going to slide the other side on here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this nice little tool and it just kind of slides up the middle and those little notches will key into the holes. So you just want to kind of center it up on that hole. And what that's doing is this, it's setting the spacing between these two bars. It's keeping them parallel to each other so that everything fits correctly. And then we kind of give it a good squeeze 
to make sure it's all together. And then that's when I'll take a damp rag here, kind of a dirty rag, and I just kind of wipe the part down, getting off all the excess glue. Now, again, one of the things I don't like about using Elmer's or wood glue is that when you do this wiping down of your part to get the excess glue, it tends to raise the grain again on the part, which makes the part not smooth after we just sanded it. So if you do use Elmer's glue and you do end up wiping the part down, after it's dried and done, you may come back and just sand it on the sanding pad again um, to help clean it up. So you'll see that part is just kind of pressed together. The little fixture is holding it in place while it dries. And basically we're just going to set it aside to let that dry. So you'll see here, done with the Elmer's glue for now, done with the Vaseline. You'll see here we've got our bolting base and basically the finger base, those two pieces. Okay, so while those guys sit over here and dry, what we can start doing is assembling the rest of our kit. So the next thing I want to do is take our little links here. and. It's easiest to start by just assembling these links. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the pins in the links. Now, let me pull out our pins here. You should have a total of five pins. Three large and, I mean, I'm sorry, two large and three small. This one actually has been assembled. Let me pull that out of there. Two large and three small. Now where those pins go is the two large go in our larger of our links, two small go in our small links, and one small goes in the little tiny Delrin ball that we all are so familiar with. So let's start with the Delrin ball. So what you'll do is you'll hold the ball and you'll take a pin and you just kind of start to press it in there. Now it's going to be tight. You just need to kind of get it in a tiny little bit and then what I like to do is grab the pin with my needle nose and press it on the table a little bit. Again, don't mar your table. But you'll press that through. Then I'll flip it over and do the same from the other side. You just kind of want to press that pin, that pin through the ball. There you go. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to center it up. It can be a bit of a bear sometimes. So what I'm doing there is I'm grabbing the pin and I lightly hold the pin and push down and that slides the ball. So you'll see here that we've pressed one of the small pins through the center of the Delrin ball. So that's done. Next we'll take our link and again if you look at the link you'll notice that one hole is smaller than the other because of the taper. I start with the larger side of the hole it helps the pin start in. Push it in a little bit and then press it on through using the needle nose. And then once you get it through a little bit, you can kind of use them to squeeze it and center the pins. Again, look at the side that looks a little larger, and that's the side we want to start on. We're just going to press that pin in there. They're, they can be tight, so just take your time. Don't poke your finger. But you want to just get them this. And the reason that they are so tight is that press fit is what actually holds the pin in place in the finger so it doesn't come out on you. So there's the small link, there's the Delrin ball, and now we'll do the large link. Again, you're just going to kind of center up the pin. And you can center them up a little better once they're in the finger by pushing them a little, but it's nice to get them as best centered as you can now. Alright. So, we've pressed those pins in there. Alright, so what we've done is we've pressed the pins inside the links. Okay, so we'll set those aside. 